Always wanted to create a wooden text effect, but never knew exactly where to start? Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process from start to finish. I'm Andrew and you're watching an Envato Toss Plus Adobe Illustrator based tutorial. Before we begin, I wanted to point out that this is an update to an older tutorial, so you might find that some steps have been simplified in order to make the process easier to follow. That being said, let's jump straight into it. As with every new project, we're going to start by creating a new document by heading over to File, New, or by using the Ctrl N keyboard shortcut, which will bring up the following window prompt. Here we'll want to make sure that the profile is set to Web, after which we can adjust the size of our artboard by setting its width to 700 pixels and its height to 300 pixels. As soon as we finish setting up our project file, we can select the Type tool and use it to type in the desired text that we're going to be adjusting. In my case, I'm going with the word Wood, which I'll be using in combination with a custom font called New Facebook that you can find linked in the written part of the tutorial. That being said, make sure you set your font size to something bigger. I went with a value of 240 points and then expand the created text segment by heading over to Object, Expand, Object and Fill. Once we've expanded the letters, we can center align them to the underlying artboard and then change their fill color to a light gray. Next, we're going to add some depth to our shapes by heading over to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. We will use a 14 degree angle for the X axis, a 6 degree value for the Y axis, and a minus 1 degree for the Z one, making sure to set the extrude depth to 20 points, leaving all the other settings as they are. Quickly expand the resulting effect, and then take your time and ungroup each of the letters composing shapes using the Shift Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. Once you're done, select and group the lighter front shapes together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut, changing their fill color to a light brown using red 198, green 156, and blue 109. Select all the other shapes and color them using a darker brown, red 66, green 43, and blue 11 making sure to unite those of them that have multiple composing segments. Next, we're going to want to separate our shapes by opening up the Layers panel and creating a second layer onto which we'll paste the lighter shapes renaming them both afterwards using simple descriptive labels. Since we want the shapes to behave as a single larger one, we'll need to turn them into a compound path by heading over to Object, Compound Path, where we'll hit Make. Add a copy of the resulting compound path to the clipboard using the Ctrl C keyboard shortcut, and then give it a custom texture by heading over to Effect, Texture, Texturizer, we will want to set the scaling to 80% and the relief to 3, making sure to set the light to right. As you can see, the effect ends up producing some rough pixelated edges, which we'll want to get rid of by using an opacity mask. To do so, we'll first need to paste a copy of the compound path, which we'll call using white, and then with both it and the texture selected, simply open up the transparency panel and click on the Make Mask button. Add a second copy of the compound path, which will color using white, and then adjust by applying an inner glow effect by heading over to Effect, Stylize, Inner Glow, making sure to set the color to a darker brown, red 66, green 43, and blue 11, the opacity to 100%, and the blur to 10 pixels. Expand the shapes, and then adjust the effect by opening up the transparency panel and setting its blending mode to multiply and its opacity to 40%. Paste the third copy of the compound path and then apply a linear gradient over its inner upper section using a light yellow, red 251, green 176, and blue 59 for the left color stop 
and Y with a 0% opacity level for the right stop. Add the second fill by opening up the appearance panel and then using the Add New Fill button, applying a second gradient to its inner bottom section using a dark brown, red 66, green 33, and blue 11 for the left color stop, and Y with a 0% opacity level for the right one. Change the blending mode for the lighter gradient to overlay, lowering its opacity to 10%. And then adjust the darker one by setting its blending mode to multiply and then lowering its opacity to 50%. Next, we're going to create the edge highlights by pasting two copies of the compound path, pushing the topmost one down and then to the right ones using the directional arrow keys. With both copies selected, use Pathfinder's minus front shape mode to create the cutouts, making sure to color the resulting shapes using white lowering their opacity to 40%. Add the edge shadows using the exact same process, only this time push the upper copy into the opposite direction, making sure to color the resulting shapes using black, lowering their opacity to 50%. Hide the current layer for the moment, and then shift your focus over to the darker side shapes, which will individually adjust by applying a subtle gradient to each and every one of them. Start by opening up the gradient panel and then creating a linear gradient using black for the left color stop, followed by a dark brown, red 66, green 33, and blue 11 with a 0% opacity level for the right stop. Once you have the gradient, start applying it to the different shapes by first opening up the appearance panel and adding a new fill and then simply dragging it over the shape using the gradient tool. Take your time and once you're done, make sure you select and group all the shapes together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. Add the subtle shadow by going to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow and then adjusting it by setting its opacity to 80%, its X offset to 0 pixels, its Y offset to 8 pixels and its blur to 6 pixels. Toggle on the top layer's visibility and using the pen tool, Draw a diagonal highlight, which will then intersect with a copy of the compound path. Finish up the tutorial by turning the resulting shapes into a compound path, and then applying a white linear gradient, making sure to adjust its opacity by lowering it as needed. As always, I hope you had fun working on the project, and if you have any questions, please post them within the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.